What up players, it's Wallboss Tay up in this mode. A um, little bit of an intro before the intro. I'm going to be doing a transfer tutorial today on how to do transfers. And the models and the armies you most likely will want to do these on are armies that have very clean, straight lines, like this Bretonian Knight. You also would probably want to do it on Eldar, Imperial Guard, Space Marines, anything that have really strong, clean iconography and heraldry. So today I take you through everything that I went through to get these transfers off the paper onto the model and um, one note I do want to make is that if you're doing knights or if you're doing anything that's going to use transfer work, do not glue anything on that's going to obstruct the view of what you're painting uh, for, or what you're putting the transfer on. For example, I should have kept this knight off until I did the transfers on the horse because when I, when I tried to put them on, I didn't realize I'd already glued the knight to be sitting in this position where its foot is already forward so I have to do a lot of weird adjusting and there's a chance that you might tear your transfers if you do that and while they're not expensive by any means it's just you know a hassle to have to do that so I hope you guys enjoy this video the reason why I chose to do uh, to sh make the shield look like this is because um, that little Bretonian symbol on the left the fleur-de-lis and then I decided on this side of the shield that he was in two defensive campaigns so far, or, or errantry wars. So that's why he's got shields there instead of swords. Uh, he was defending his, his realm. And under that, in my Micron pen, I wrote specific deeds that this knight has done to protect his land. So fun, fun, fun character. And uh, stay tuned to the end, I show you a little size comparison with this and an unpainted Fireforge miniature. But this is a little bit of a detail shot so you can see how bad my little swirly scrolling work is. But uh, enjoy these figures, I, I had a good time painting it. I just wish uh, they were a little bit more dynamic looking and a little bit more realistically scaled. But if that doesn't bother you, then um, hope you enjoy this video, all you Bretonian players out there. Uh, or people who've been asking me for a Bretonian video, this one is for you. What up, players? It's Wolfboss Tay up in this mud. Today we're going to do a little how to apply Bretonian transfers tutorial. So the things you're going to need are Bretonian Knight, ready for some transfers. Art coat gloss varnish. I'm using the old gloss varnish, but if you've got the new art coat, then it's. I think it's pretty much the same thing. Lamian medium whatever that is, a clamshell from a fine cast or other plastic uh, container uh, from models, some paper towel, I decided to just recycle my wet palette paper towel, and a little bit of water. And of course, you're also going to need transfers and a hobby knife. So. First things first, we are going to pour some water into our clamshell. It's just like we're making a palette, a wet palette. And we're going to put our little napkin inside. It's all soaked up. As you notice, I put in a little bit more water than I usually do. So we are making the palette like really, really soaked through. While that is getting ready, the yellow and red I looked up in my Bretonian source book, Knights of the Grail, for uh, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 2nd Edition. It says that yellow and red, the symbol is the yellow or red dragon down here, and the, the territory is called Baston. So, I'm going to use my hobby knife to cut out a red dragon and a yellow dragon. I gotta make sure that it's the one facing forward because the red I'm gonna put on the on the yellow shield of the horse and the um, yellow dragon I'm gonna put on the red shield of the horse. So excuse me, I just Cutting so this from Ooh, messy, messy, messy. Okay, 
So, here we go. Let's zoom out a little bit. And, all right, so I'm gonna be getting one of these left-facing dragons. So I'm just gonna cut there. You always wanna use a cutting surface, whatever that is for you. Some people have, like this is a Gale Force 9 cutting surface, or cutting, I, I think they're called like mats, cutting mats. There is a, right up the street from my house, there is a house full of college girls that like to walk around in skimpy clothes and have lots of parties on the weekend that they never invite me to. And um, trying to maintain this facade of not weird, nerdy-ism So they don't have their big jock boyfriends tease me when I go out to my car in the morning. That's so weird. Like there's, they take out their trash in like short shorts and crop tops and I'm like, really? I saw this movie when I was a kid. called Porky's. So we're going to put it onto the napkin with some tweezers and you see it kind of soaks right through. Pick another spot and we're going to let it soak right through. Should only take a second. While that is separating we're going to take a brush and you're going to paint gloss varnish onto the areas of the horse that we're going to put the transfers on. My brother told me last, um, like last Halloween or something, he was in his car in the garage and uh, he was on his phone. <laughs> and like we live on a driveway so they're further up the driveway like in the back in the corner. And he says that, yeah, I'm in my car on my phone, and um, I see walking up the driveway this big, like 19, 20 year old girl in like the sexy cat outfit with like the short shorts and like the black lingerie top. And she's just talking on her phone, like going to this Halloween party. And then she stops and she's talking on her phone and she's like fixing her tail and you know, pulling up her top and adjusting everything and getting all the lady bits in prominent displayed displaying position <laughs> she looked like right at him and realized that there was somebody sitting there and he was like uh yeah i didn't know i, I didn't want to wave but also i didn't want to make any motions like hey stop doing that there's somebody right here <laughs> i was like dude that is so funny I can't believe it. Lucky us. All right. <clears throat> so we've got our gloss varnish painted on our shields. And now we are waiting for that. I'm gonna give that like a little second to dry. I'll take the red first. So really simple. By now, your transfers should have been separated. And what I mean by that is you take your fine tweezers and you kind of just push the design around and they should easily like separate from the backing and that's when you know that it is ready to go so I'm gonna just get a good grip on it with the tweezers and slump it right on top I like to try to aim for the middle of the transfer to get where the middle of the design is supposed to be. Everything else can move around, but I'm gonna make sure that the uh, middle of the, the design kind of sits where it's supposed to be. You wanna aim for that. Okay, then let's get the other piece. 
things here. I used to never like transfers. I just thought they were really just bad looking. Uh, and then I realized that I couldn't freehand to save my life. So I had to. Okay, the good thing about the glass varnish is that for something like this where you're gonna have to move it around, the glass varnish is there underneath to help you. So you take your brush and you just smooth it over. Ah, you don't want it to set yet. So I'm gonna take a little bit of water, keep the thing moist, and move it over if I can. Oh, come on, transfer, don't sit there. I'm gonna dunk this baby into the water here to make it a little bit more slippery. And this is probably my fault for attaching the knight before painting it. <laughs> See, now I'm thinking about my neighbors. Their cute little Halloween outfits. It's funny because right next to them, um, on the other side of the driveway, live a bunch of grumpy old Japanese people. <laughs> So, it's like, you know, come on, dragon, go up the shield. That bitch is ridiculous. Any of you uh, experienced painters out there know how to solve this problem? I've never actually encountered it before. Usually my transfers that I use are a little bit smaller so I don't have to worry about covering such a large area. There we go, I just need to go from this way. Oh, bingo! That's a bingo. went from the top and pulled it down like that. Oh, little tail stuck. Little tail stuck. Alright. There we go. That's a bingo. So you just take your brush and you push out any air bubbles underneath once the transfer is where you want it to be. Oh, I haven't even paid attention to you on the back, my friend. Sorry about that. I'll let this dry uh, for just a second, and then we're going to put the Lamian medium over it. What is this Lamian medium? I'm reading my How to Paint Miniatures book to help me out with this. So it says, carefully pick up the transfer, put it on. Once you are happy with the location, smooth it out, and then use a small piece of tissue to dab it dry. Oh. Hmm. Finally, paint over it with Lamian Medium to mat the area down and seal the transfer. Seal the transfer. So I don't have any dry tissue handy. Okay, I'm back, and I got some tissue paper. So we're just gonna dab it a little bit, dry. Yeah, and you see how the transfer, because it's printed on plastic, it's got a very shiny, glossy finish to it that doesn't match with the supposed cloth of what it's uh, supposed to be printed on. Actually, I don't know, would this be? 
on cloth. What are these shields on this horse parting supposed to be made of? You just don't want any air bubbles in the middle. So that's why I use a brush to brush on some just a little bit of water to smooth out any air bubbles that land in the center. Lamy and medium. Ugh, why would... Why do they have to name it that? So stupid. What about the Lamy and vampires? Makes you think that it's okay to call your mat medium Lamy and medium. It doesn't make any sense. G GW, that is a stretch. XV88 is a stretch. Balthazar Gold. It's funny. The character's name is Bar Balthazar Geld. And he's a gold wizard for the Empire. I get it. It's funny. Still, it's a stretch. Okay, so the matte medium is supposed to take away the shine. It's supposed to be like dull coat, I guess. Right? Still this weird air bubble inside. Hmm. Out of there, air bubble. Okay, the final step that I like to do to just make it look a little bit more uh, in tune with the rest of my miniature is I'll let this dry for about an hour or so just to be on the safe side. And then I'll come back with some lighter paints, like for example, Mephiston Red, or uh, Irio Yellow, or Flash Kits Yellow, and then I'll just highlight a little bit. So, actually a good way to, to wait is would be to uh, do the opposite side, and possibly work on the shield, because the shield, I'm, um, I don't know if I'll have enough little dragons for it, so I'll see what else I can do for that. And yeah, we'll come back in just a little bit and finish this transfer tutorial up. Okay, so the last part of this uh, transfer tutorial I'm gonna do is um, after the transfer has dried, pretty much, on your background, what to do to make it blend into more like your paint scheme. So what I do is I take the highest highlights, so for this case, Aerial Yellow and Flash Gets Yellow, and I will slowly build them up on the transfer itself. Really slowly, kind of taking to, just like if I were to highlight this on a normal model, if this were a highlight on a normal model. So I kind of follow the general bone structure of this dragon here. great thing about transfers, I mean they look so cool when you put them on but once you give them this little extra bit of paint, they really really get more cohesive looking, they tie into the rest of your model, really nicely. that. I'm going to let that dry for a second. Meanwhile, we're going to go to the other dragon and the one on the back panel and do some Fiston Red. You also might notice that even with the matte medium on, you might still get a little bit of this plastic, glossy, shiny plastic look on the, on the model whenever you turn it towards the light. And if you really are not liking that and want to get rid of it, all you have to do is take whatever the color of your background is on the shield and just paint that in all the, all the negative areas all the empty space so 
So this one is kind of tricky because the actual transfer itself is a lighter color than the brightest color that I use for the background, so it has a opposite effect. I'm going to use one more highlight color, Wild Rider Red. Hopefully this will pick it up just a little bit. almost exactly the color of the transfer itself but once it mixes with that Mephiston red and the transfer color that blend makes it look really nice and let me show you just what I mean if you can really if you really can't stand that that background shine then I'm gonna take some Ereal yellow All you gotta do is make sure it's thin down and then just paint around your transfer. I actually saw this in a White Dwarf article for a Tale of Four Gamers article a long time ago. When, back when the uh, Stompa was released a couple years back. I thought that's brilliant. I hadn't thought of doing that. So let me know if you guys have any t tips or tricks for applying transfers. I am by no means any sort of expert on anything really but I do like the way transfers look that's the effect you get so I did some transfers up here on the shield as well as over here on the shoulder pad I did the same thing I took some lighter grays and I highlighted it up and yeah here is my night so uh, the last thing I want to do is show you the comparison shot. Uh, I did not, I'm sorry, I did not finish painting this model, but I wanted to show people who have seen my Teutonic Templar Knights unboxing kind of side by side. This is how they look together. The Bretonian Knight is obviously a little bit beefier. Um, but I still like the younger knight, or the smaller looking knight, younger, <laughs> like a little kid. Even though he's less beefy, I kind of, I like the look, it looks more realistic, like look at the horse. This horse is just like galloping like full, full, full steam ahead, and this one just kind of like doop -de doop -de doo cantering up. Anyways, thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you in the next video.